Okay, so the conditions for a rigid body equilibrium. So that's going to be that the sum of the forces is equal to zero, and the sum of the moments, about 0.0, is also equal to zero. And that can only happen because a rigid body will not, dis will not deform. So let's discuss free body diagrams, which of course we've already done that, but we're adding a new element to this free body diagram now. And that's support reactions. So we've been talking a lot about um, finding the resultant force of a system, but we haven't been discussing what to do with that resultant force. So now um, we're going to say here's the resultant force of the system and that's what it does to um, the support. So um, whether or not it's roller, roller support, a pin support, or a fixed support. So if a support prevents the translation of a body in a given direction then a force is developed on the body in that direction. And if rotation is prevented, a couple moment is exerted on the body. Okay, so let's look at a couple of examples. Let's say we had a roller support. Okay, so you have the end of a beam just sitting on basically a ball, right? So this is not going to prevent it from um, going forwards or backwards. It will only prevent it from going up or down. And rotation won't be prevented. So this reaction will only exert a force up. So that's all that it's doing. It's only preventing movement um, up or down. All right, so let's look at a pin. So pin support, the pin actually goes through the beam, right? So, if a pin is going all the way through the beam, it's not going to be able to move uh, forwards or backwards, or up or down. So this one, since it can't move up or down, it's going to have a force in the y direction. And since it can't move side to side, it's going to have a force in the x direction. Okay? Now let's look at a fixed support. All right, so this beam is totally fixed to the wall. So that means we're not gonna be able to move in the X or Y direction. And the beam can't rotate. 
So it's going to apply a couple moment of M. Okay? So table 5, 1 in the book has a bunch of examples. Okay, so you've got things like a cable, which is only going to be able to have one force. Basically everything on this page is just um, one force. So, for instance, this roller, right? This link can move anywhere except for where this exact force is being, is being um, applied, right? Because it can still rotate, so there's no moment, and it can move... Um, in the direction of the slope. That's the same with the rocker, just a smooth contacting surface, and a roller, and a um, member pin connected to collar on smooth rod. So all of these, they can only um, keep it from moving where the um, link touches the surface. Okay. Then we've got our pin, which we already went over. It's got two forces. Then we've got a member fixed connected to collar on smooth rod. So if you look at this, right, you're going to have a force exerted in the plane. And then you also can't rotate this, right? You can't rotate it like this at all because it's um, connected. So it also exerts a moment. And then like we already discussed, our fixed support. So if you're ever confused um, when you're looking at a problem, come back to this table because most likely the problem will have stated it's a weightless link or it's a roller, it's a rocker, and you can see what type of force that's um, going to be exerted. And as you gain more experience, this becomes really intuitive. And you can just look at a support and say, okay, that can only um, have a force at this certain direction. And, you know, it's not going to rotate, so it's got a moment. Or it is going to rotate, so there is no couple moment. So. The other thing that is key in this is internal forces. Well, this is really just a simplification, I guess not necessarily key. And that's um, internal forces act uh, between adjacent particles, and they always occur in collinear pairs, such that they have the same magnitude and act in opposite directions. So they can just be um, neglected in a free body diagram if the whole body is being considered. So. Internal forces are neglected in um, oops, in a F B D if the whole body is being considered. So the other thing that we need to take into consideration when making our free body diagram is weight and the center of gravity. Okay, so say we had some object beautiful object. You've got your center of gravity and your weight acting from that point. So the weight of an object will act at the center of gravity G.
of the object. So if the body is made from the same material, then the center of gravity will be at the body's geometric centroid. So we haven't learned yet how to find the center of gravity or the body's geometric centroid yet. So um, for now, your problems will say um, G is located here. And that's where the weight of the object is.